Actually, no, 31. 31. 31. Yeah. On staff, even longer as a writer. That was just something I did. I, I started writing for Mad when I was in grammar school. They didn't buy it, but I was writing it, right? And when I was going through high school and college, I had a part-time job at the nickel company. And I, after college, I didn't, what am I going to do? I needed money, you know? So the nickel company said, you want to work in the sales department. So I worked there, and it was intensely dull, intensely boring. And thank God, uh, they had a massive layoff, and they laid me off. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me, you know? Uh, and I, I got a job at MAD. Oh, well, I was writing for MAD, and one day Nick Meglin, who had found me out of the slush pile, called me up and said, uh, have you ever considered working on other people's scripts? And I was shocked because nobody ever left MAD. I was the first person they hired in 24 years. So um, I joined them and as an associate editor, and then four years later, Al Feldstein retired, and Nick Meglin and I became co-editors. And then, I guess about six years ago, Nick retired after 50 years. Like I said, no one ever leaves me. And, um, and now I'm sole editor. It comes all different ways. Sometimes in a writer will just have an idea and send it to us. Other times people will be sitting in my office and come up with an idea and say, who could write that? And we'll play the writer's strengths and we'll assign it out to them. Uh, it's a constant process. And a lot of times an article will start over here and by the time it's written, it's, it's, it winds up someplace way over here. It just, it's just part of the creative process. And it's much more challenging now too because we're doing a daily blog and uh, we're also, we have an app and the magazine, so we're really generating a lot more humor than we used to, and as well as a book program. There's no particular theme for an issue. We try to reflect what's going on in society. So um, we have to pick our targets fairly carefully, only in that we, mo we don't want to make something that's a very hot story, but for one day and then it's gone. You know, because we're working on issues that are out two, three, four months out. Excuse me. So we're very careful about what we what we pick on. That's the, the beauty of the blog, though, that that will give us a chance. If, if a story hits and it's hot, we can strike on it that day. And tomorrow the story's gone. That's fine. There's something else new on the blog. So that the blog is very freeing in that regard. Um, for example, we just did the day the Jerry Sandusky uh, trial came came over. We were able to marry that with the movie Ted, and we did a poster called Ped, and put it, and we got it on the blog that day. And it's very funny. And, you know, it, it, it was of the moment. It always starts in my office with my staff, the, certainly the editorial staff, sometimes the art staff, sitting and talking about what's in the news and what, what we could do on the blog. The blog is our first thing we do in the day. And then from there, we'll look over what's going on in the issue, what's what the various stages, because we're probably working on three issues at any given time. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about, all right, what don't we have in the issue that we might like? All right, this next issue doesn't have any politics. We should maybe put some politics in. Or it's too political heavy. What can we pull out and put in something that's more fun? You know? And then, of course, we have the staples, Spy versus Spy, Serge Aragonis. Those things are a planet tad. Those things are always on and going forward. That's one of the beauties of having a room. Because if you're having a bad day, Hopefully the guy sitting next to you isn't. And everybody elevates each other's games. And I won't lie to you, there's egos involved. And if he got a joke off, I'm looking to get a better joke off. So it'll, it'll spur people on. And the other thing, Matt is one of those places where you're really rewarded for saying something stupid. And you should never censor anything in Matt when you're in a Matt meeting because you never know where it's going to go. I mean, the, the example I give all the time, and it's in this book that we're doing, uh, 60 Years of Mad Book, has to do with, I was talking about going down to Delaware and crossing the river as a trip. And Nick Meglin, the co-editor, walked by and he said, what, Washington's cross-dressing the Delaware? And it's just a stupid pun, but it immediately became two pages in Mad because we hired an artist to do this beautiful portrait of Washington cross-dressing the Delaware, just like the original. The only difference is he's in a brocaded off-the-shoulder gown. So, and, and it's, it's stuff like that that you never want to censor yourself in mad. It's, it's one of the few places where being stupid is rewarded. <laughs> we, luckily, that doesn't happen too often. I hire very well, and I have a terrific staff. 
uh, both on the art and editorial end. And, uh, and they worked very hard because we put out a lot of material. And it is a very small staff. You know, we have freelancers, but the, the, the actual editorial staff is very small. That, that's really, really scary. I mean, when we, when we titled this book, it wasn't by accident. 60 years of humor, satire, stupidity, and stupidity. You know, it wasn't by accident that we gave it that title. You should read Mad. You can take it as seriously as you want, but you should always enjoy Mad. Mad is meant to be a fun read and make you laugh more than anything else. Uh, if we're not making people laugh, we're not doing our job. For a long time, I had on my, de on my uh, door taped there was a front page picture of the New York Times. It's got to go back now 25 years. And it was of an Indian newsstand that talked about the Americanization of Indian culture. And they had a newsstand, and there were three different issues of MAD prominently displayed up on there. I thought, oh, what a great thing, you know? <laughs> yes, we appreciate that loyalty. And you can certainly subscribe to MAD. And we also have the MAD app, so you can get the entire issue. On, on if you have an iPad, and it's coming to the Nook as well. But the iPad edition is really wonderful. It's really a terrific, terrific uh, thing. And you get the whole issue, and you can get it for 10 bucks for a year. It's, it's incredibly cheap. So, thank you.